In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the crankshaft position sensor on this Toyota Tacoma with a 2.4 liter engine. Let's get started. Let's start by disconnecting the negative battery terminal. Take a 10 millimeter wrench and loosen up this terminal. It's obviously in poor condition, but we're going to assume for the purposes of this video that it's good. If yours wiggles around like that when it's tight, definitely replace it. Take the negative off and set it aside right here so it cannot make connection. Now let's unplug or disconnect the main power wire that goes on the alternator so that we can remove the alternator more easily. Pull this cap off. That's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt or mounting nut. Break this free. Be careful. If this is very corroded, you don't want to break the stud internally on the alternator. Remove this. Once you pull the nut off, you should be able to pull the wire off and set it aside. Now let's disconnect the electrical connector. Press on that tab, wiggle it, and it should pop off. A lot of times these get stuffed with debris and sand, so clean that out. You set both of these aside. Now from underneath the vehicle, which you can do from up top too, but it's easier to see from underneath, take a 14 millimeter socket and loosen up the bolt that goes on the bottom of the alternator. Oftentimes, this one is fairly stuck here. There we go. Don't remove it, or at least not yet. Just loosen it up a few turns so the alternator can pivot. That way we can remove tension off of the belt. I'm gonna leave this right about here. This should be good enough. At the top of the alternator, you'll see the adjuster uh, locking bolt here. This is a 12 millimeter in size. Stick a socket or a wrench up there and break this free. Let's loosen it up. This one, you do not have to remove, but you do have to loosen up a little bit so you can get some, some uh, free play in that adjuster. Get your socket off once you get it off a few turns. That should be good right there. And now, this threaded bolt here, we have to thread counterclockwise, basically unthread. That'll push the whole thing over, and the alternator should be able to pivot that way so we can get the belt off. I'm gonna do this with my air ratchet just so it can go a little bit quicker, but obviously you can do this by hand. That's a 12 millimeter in size. The alternator didn't move. It's probably because it's a little stuck, so we'll tap it. I'm using a rubber mallet, that way I don't damage anything. Once you loosen it enough, you should be able to move the belt off. If you can't, loosen up on the adjuster some more. There we go, Just leave that there. Now I'm gonna remove the bolt that locks in the tensioner here. Just gonna pull it out all the way. This will release the alternator from the top. Okay. At this point you can also remove this if you want. Keep in mind in which direction it goes. The hole is closer to one side than the other. I'm gonna remember that it goes towards the bottom, not towards the top. On the other side of this bolt, once it's broken free, you're gonna have to hold on to the mounting nut with a 14 millimeter wrench and then unthread the bolt. Okay, and there's that. And there's the bolt. We will have to remove this bolt. Take a, take a pry bar and try to tap it out. Take a pry bar, pry the alternator out of the lower bracket. Make sure it doesn't fall, of course, after it does that. And you can either remove it or just kind of set it aside. I'm just gonna try to get it out of here so it's out of my way. I'm just gonna tuck it out of the way over here. All we need access to is this bracket. Take a 12 millimeter socket, break this free, the bolt that goes through the front of this bracket. Gonna go ahead and remove it all the way. Yep, 
There's a 14 millimeter bolt at the back. There's actually another one up here, but you can't really see that one. I'm gonna leave that one for last. Let's undo the 14 millimeter all the way at the back of this bracket. Remove it. And now take this one out, which is up here. Can't really see it. For this one, you'll need a short extension or a deep socket. The two 14 millimeter bolts are the same, so no need to keep them separate. Follow the wire for the crank position sensor. That'll lead you to its connector. At the top of it will be the tab that you have to press in order to unplug it. And then we have to disconnect it off of this bracket. I'm gonna take a 12 millimeter socket and remove this bolt. My bracket is pretty stuck on that connector, so I'd rather unbolt it instead of breaking that bracket by accident. There we go. Now take a 10 millimeter socket or a T30, but usually the Torx cutout is uh, pretty rusted out by now, worn out. And you're gonna wanna break both of these bolts free. It's two 10 millimeter bolts on these crank position sensors. Now this bolt that goes through here, a lot of times gets stuck and seized. So, so I sprayed it with rust penetrant and I'm gonna work it back and forth. I don't wanna break it in the, uh, in the front of the block there. Looks like it's working. There we go, that's perfect. And with this one out, we can get to the other one. This one's usually a lot easier to get out because the hole isn't open on the other side, so no water can make it in there. With these out, we can grab the crank sensor, pull it out. Grab a pair of pliers and very gently grab it. I'm gonna wanna give it a twist a little bit just to break that O-ring free. Oh, there we go. And now as you twist it, you're gonna wanna pull out on it. If it's difficult to remove, you can stick a tiny little screwdriver down here and very gently pry, but be careful. You don't wanna damage this, uh, this housing here. Take the sensor out. Some oil might leak out, especially if the vehicle's been ran recently. There it is. Remove it with the wire. One last thing we have to do is transfer this little bracket over to our new sensor. So you're gonna need a pick to pry up on this tab here, which mine looks like it's a little bit bent. I'm just gonna pry it up with my pliers. There we go. It, sometimes it doesn't actually stay like that, but uh, at this point you can grab the bracket, wiggle and slide the connector off of it. And once it's off, there's the sensor. Let's get the new one. This area where the crank position sensor mounts, you wanna make sure that it's not corroded or rusted. If it is, clean it up. I'm just gonna wipe off all the oil and debris that's around here so that it can seal up. If you had your new sensor, you'd slide this bracket in, make sure it locks in. There we go. Grab your sensor, slide it in, make sure it seats all the way, and then we're gonna put in the bolts. Start them by hand, you don't wanna cross thread these. Once they're started, let's snug them up. Don't tighten it too much by hand. Uh, we'll come back and torque it. You definitely don't want these over tightened. They can break easily, they're very small. Seventy-four inch pounds is the torque for both of these bolts. Get the connector for the sensor. I took the bolt out of it, so I'm going to put the bolt back in. Once you get that bolt started, snug it up. That is if you took it out. If not, just slide the connector onto that bracket at this point. The bracket has a little hook on it, so if you removed it, it should center up by itself as you tighten it. There we go, let's snug it up. 
tighten up the bolt. Just make it nice and snug, give it about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. Just holding on a little bracket. There we go. And now reach in for the connector, plug it in. When you plug it in, make sure it clicks just like that. Now let's install the alternator bracket. I'm gonna start with this bolt that's a little trickier to get to. You can tilt the bracket at an angle at first and just to get it started, but then of course you're gonna have to straighten that bracket out before you bottom the bolt out, otherwise it's not gonna line up properly. I'm just gonna get this, sn not snugged up, but you know, bottomed out just by hand so that it can stay in place and not twist around. Okay, now let's get the other rear bolt started. And lastly, the one in the front. With all of them started and pretty much bottomed out at this point, we can torque them. The two big bolts get torqued to 55 foot-pounds and the front one, the smaller one, is 13 foot-pounds. Gonna start with these bigger ones. Now, if you can't torque it, just do your best to make it nice and snug. All right, that's it. Once again, the front one is 13 foot-pounds. That's it right there. Now take your alternator and Get it back on here. My bushing was uh, very stuck there, so it didn't move a whole lot, but it should make this part quite a bit easier. I'm gonna take a rubber mallet and just gently tap the alternator in place. I don't wanna shock it with a steel hammer. Now I'm gonna take this bottom bolt and slide it in. It's probably not gonna fit right off the bat, but I can keep moving the alternator around. Uh, I don't know, I think it has to go up and in. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's in all the way. We can put the mounting nut back on the other side. And with that started, we can go to the top and install the adjuster. Let's get the adjuster, or the, you know, the bolt for the adjustment back in here. And this is the tricky part here. We're gonna have to line up the bolt that locks it in with the alternator, which is gonna be threads for it. This are gonna be on the back side. You can kind of estimate where it is and it looks like I got it on right away. So that's good. I'm going to get this close. Not gonna tighten it yet, of course. First, we need to put tension on it and adjust it properly. Well, that's it. At this point, this moves around. That's great. I'm gonna push it all the way in so that we can put the belt on. Now grab the belt, make sure it's on all the other pulleys, which is basically just the harmonic balancer and the water pump. Slide it over the alternator, just like this. If it's loose enough, you should be able to spin it manually to make sure that it's in all the grooves. That looks perfect to me. So let's uh, tighten this, put some tension on it. Tighten this up. Okay, so at this point, we need to tension the belt properly. You wanna take the longest stretch of belt, which in this case is gonna be the bottom one. You're gonna to wanna to spin it between 45 and 90 degrees easily. Any more than that should not be able to spin easily. That's how you know you have it tensioned properly. And if you go up to the shortest stretch, you should not be able to go more than 45 degrees easily. That right there feels perfect to me. If it's too loose, it'll squeal, so you'll know, and uh, hopefully you don't make it too tight, because if you do, it can actually burn out the bearings in the alternator, as well as the belt itself. So at this point, now that it's locked in tension-wise, 
we can lock in the top and the bottom bolts. Get a 12 millimeter on that top bolt and tighten it up. 14 millimeter on the bottom. Gonna have to hold the nut side with a wrench. 43 foot pounds on the bottom. I'm gonna hold the bolt side and torque the nut side. That gives you a little bit more accurate of a torque spec. That's it. 21 foot pounds on the top for the adjuster bolt. reconnect the alternator. Plug in this connector here, make sure it clicks. And then inspect your power wire, make sure it's free of corrosion. Mine looks in decent condition. Put the mounting nut back on. It's a ten, little 10 millimeter mounting nut. And snug it up. When you tighten this, be very careful because being so small, it can actually break that stud internally in the alternator. You're gonna wanna avoid that obviously, otherwise you'll need a new alternator. So once you bottom it out, just give it about an eighth of a turn at most. That's it, that's all you want. You don't want the whole thing to start spinning on you. That would be bad. And had a little cover cap, put that back on. Just like so, this just protects it from debris. Last but not least, reconnect your battery. If you had any corrosion, of course, clean that up on the terminal, now would be a good time. And to know that this is properly tightened, just snug it up and then you're gonna wanna make sure you feel this terminal, make sure it doesn't move around, you can't spin it. Obviously my terminal is in poor condition here so I can spin it a little bit. You should not be able to do that. Once you cannot spin it anymore, that's how you know that this is tight enough. Don't crush this down all the way, otherwise something like this can happen where the terminal stretches out. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.